Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about singleton design pattern, mainly how not to implement singleton design pattern. So first let me give you an introduction of singleton design pattern. Singleton design pattern is a pattern which ensures that there is only one instance of the type is available throughout the application. And to provide this feature, in traditional implementation, the initialization of the object was done inside of the class itself. And that's where lies the problem. And I'm going to get into the details. But let's discuss about what scenarios you are going to use a singleton design button. Singleton design pattern is mainly used situations where you want to maintain state of an object throughout the application. So irrespective of the workflow, in case of a web API application, irrespective of which request it comes through, you want to maintain the state and the state will be maintained inside of the application and not database. Otherwise, the state can be maintained in database and you don't have to worry about a singleton object. The only time you have to implement singleton design pattern or a singleton object is when you want to maintain the state in memory inside of the process. So having said that, let's talk about how a singleton design pattern is implemented in a traditional way. So traditionally, for a singleton design pattern, we create a class and let's say I'm going to create singleton design pattern for a user manager or a class which gives information of all the users. And let's say this class loads the user information when the application starts and then keeps it in memory. Now I'm not going to make any database connection or anything, but I'm just going to show how we will implement the singleton class and where we can potentially have database calls. So the way we implement singleton design pattern is we want to keep the responsibility of creating the instance inside of the class because that is how you can maintain a singleton object throughout the application so that you don't let anyone else create the instance of the class. Now, how do you achieve that? The only way to achieve that is if you create a private constructor. That's the only way to ensure that you have only one instance of the class. But when you create a private constructor, that means the instance of the class has to be returned by this particular class. Otherwise, you know, how would you use any of the public functions? And you don't want to be a static class because then it is not same as a singleton class. So for that, what we usually do is we create a private static object. And most of the time for better implementation, we want to use a lazy initialization so we can do something like this we can use a private static read only and we can use lazy of user manager and we can name it as instance is equal to new of lazy user manager and for the implementation we can say new of user manager so that's a lazy initialization of the class now here in the constructor is where we can make a db or distributed cache call to get initial user information let's say this is what you can do and now we create a public property which is going to return this object so that property also needs to be public and it has to be static so that it can be called using the class name so it will be public static user manager and we can name the property as instance is the instance dot value and this is what is going to return the object from the lazy instance and this is the point where when we call instance dot value is when this lambda is going to be executed and the user manager object will be created and returned so that's how you get lazy initialization and after that it can have public methods like for now let's say it's just returning username usernames and this can be here can be let's create a private user 
usernames and this can be just returning the username so just for simplicity I'm keeping the implementation simple and let's say here you get the usernames from DB but for our case we can just create a couple of name here so this is a traditional implementation of uh, I can make it as read only so this is a traditional implementation of singleton design pattern so obviously there are couple of problems First of all, when you deal with a singleton instance and it manages state, you have to worry about threads. If you are accessing this object from multiple threads, you have to handle concurrency. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of that because the solution that I'm going to talk about in that solution also, we still have to worry about thread concurrency. So that is not what I'm going to cover in this video. But the biggest problem with this kind of implementation of singleton instance is that any other class which uses this user manager will automatically become non-testable. Now you ask me why. Let's say we want to use the user manager inside of a new class called, let's add a new class. And let's say the name of the class is user processor. Now inside of user processor, we have a public void process okay and let's say here if we have to get the user informations we are going to say user manager dot instance dot user names and then we can implement some logic here and let's say it's after processing it returns a string a single user and for our purpose let's just return fast fast or default now at this point if we want to test user processor and we want to test the logic of process it is almost impossible to test it because the user manager cannot be mocked why it cannot be mocked because it's a singleton instance and how the instance is created is encapsulated inside of the user manager itself so we cannot use traditional mocking with this but there's a solution for that we can create an interface here and then here instead of using user manager we can inject that interface and then whoever creates this class can pass the user manager dot instance so that's one way of solving the problem but the easiest way to solve the problem is using dependency injection and why is it so because as you know and i spoke about dependency injection lifetime in one of the video in dependency injection container we can use an object as a singleton when we use add singleton it creates a singleton object meaning if we add the user manager here the user manager will be accessed across the application lifecycle and there will be only one instance of user manager so this implements the singleton design pattern but it is much more elegant because in that case we don't have to have a private constructor we don't have to have a private instance and a static property and all these things we can create a normal class and that the normal class will have an interface which will be implemented and then we can easily test it so first let's show how we can modify the user processor to make it testable so as i mentioned one way is we can declare an interface here so we can say i user manager and let's create user manager in a new file and the user manager can have a property called user names so we can go here and we can define user names and make it as get so now what happens is inside of the user processor we can declare constructor and we can have i user manager user manager declare user manager here and here we can say user manager dot user names so once we do that now this class become testable because i user manager can be mocked by any mo mocking framework 
and we can return mock data for users and the logic can be tested. So that's one way. But if we are using .NET Core or .NET 5, given that dependency injection is built in, there is no need to do all this logic. We can just get rid of these two lines of code. We can make this as public. That's about it. It's just a standard class. And now in the startup, we can just add this and this can be I user manager and this can be user manager and then we get a singleton instance across the whole assembly there's one loophole with this implementation the loophole is given that this class is a normal class no one is stopping any other part of the solution to create multiple instance of this class and use it and create a confusion. But this kind of logic was probably true 10 years back or even five years back. But in the age of microservices and smaller manageable services and components, this is not valid anymore. Most of the cases, services have only few classes to deal with and mostly managed by a single developer. So there is no scenario where multiple people are looking into like hundreds and thousands of lines of code for a project and don't understand that it should not be created and also another argument is if you are using dependency injection no one should be using a new of user manager anywhere so that logic kind of doesn't hold as well so this is the gist about singleton design button and I also wanted to mention that sometimes you might hear people say singleton design pattern is an anti pattern I personally don't feel that's the case I think it used to be called as anti pattern because of how it was implemented and due to that kind Kind of implementation it is harder to test hence it becomes very complex because the instance creation is responsibility of the class itself hence it's impossible to test other classes which depends on singleton design pattern but as I showed in this video, there are a couple of ways to solve it. One way is to implement an interface and use the interface everywhere. The other way, which is the easiest way to do and which we all of us probably use nowadays is just using a dependency injection container and configure the class as a singleton in the dependency injection container. So that's all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any question regarding singleton design pattern, please leave a comment below. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.